Okay, so let's take a look at a situation where we want to make a selection, but we can't just use visual inspection to say this is the plant that we're looking for, right? We can't just look at the color, look at the shape, say that's what I want, and then taste the flavor and the heat and be like, bingo, got it. These plants taste the same, they have similar sized fruit, and they have, both of these have a recessive mutation for kind of down moderation of capsaicinoid expression. So these are the fruit where the exterior f flesh of the fruit is non-pungent, but then the seeds are very pungent because both parents are extremely hot, right? And so we need to decide between these two plants which one we're going to make our elite selection at an advance to the next generation. Or do we pick both and bulk them together? That's another option. Well, based on the subjective um, observations of the plant, again, flavor is very similar, taste very similar, and then visually, obviously, they're very, very similar. From my experience with peppers, I can tell you that this one on the left here, that's absolutely covered with fruit and is kind of drooping, that is probably too many fruit for the plant and it is, it is what I would call overcropped. And what is happening is that when you have so many fruit of a small size, that when you get out towards the end, you have ma many hundreds of little fruit and there's simply not enough resources for them to fully develop into a full size um, berry. So. That to me is a negative trait. Um, and so yield wise, I'm looking more at this plant as my ideal, right? But it does come down to empirical facts. And so let's take a look at the mass, the average mass of three to five fruit. And then we'll look at what's more important to me at this stage is the dissolved sugar content of the fruit extract. So basically we're gonna smash a pepper fruit and then we're gonna look at how much sugar is dissolved in that um, extract, that juice. So let's uh, take a look here. Okay, so to do this analysis of the dissolved sugar content, you just take a pepper that is at that perfect peak ripeness. And that I think will be a good candidate. And so you take this, and this is a refractometer. So this is a zero to 32%. And so these are often used for home brewing. Um, they do have some that are used for like honey, which go to like 80, 90% uh, dissolved sugar content. That's not what you got. Although if you do have a pepper that has 8% dissolved sugar content, send me some seed, holy shit. All right. So this cross is Shiro Roja by Ahichara Pita, and it was selected by one of our community members, uh, Earmuffs for the Younger Audience Fuck Off Register page. I think I can only say that word like once or twice in a video, so that's probably the only opportunity you're going to get. Um, so yeah, so there is our pepper juice. You can see it on the slide there, or on the prism, and then we're going to cover the slide over it. And so as you set the slide down, you should see a nice adhesion layer of the liquid form. So that's not perfect, but if we mess with it, we'll get there. So there you go, no bubbles. And then we need to try to look through it. And so bear with me with the uh, camera nonsense here. All right. And so with that fruit extract on the prism with the slide over it and a light source behind you, you can see dissolved sugar content. And so from my angle up here narrating, it looks like 5.8, right? Very good. And then we can compare it to the other plant. And we'll just squeeze it right on the slide till we get a nice couple drops. And then we'll close the slide over the prism, just like that, beautiful. And then we'll see if we can get this on the first shot. Oh, that's beautiful. So the other was 5.8 and this is more like a 5.0 or a 4.8. So again, looking at these plants, the plant on the right has more sugar than the plant on the left. And again, that may be because it has uh, fewer fruit, right? Photosynthate is ultimately what gets turned into sucrose and what we're testing here. And that comes from leaves. And if you have more fruit and the same number of leaves, those fruit are gonna have fewer sugar. So there you go. There is another selection uh, for the open pepper breeding program. Uh, it's gonna be the plant on the right. And this will be uh, an individual out of PD5. So this will be PD5.2 based on its position in the row. 
So if you want to support us, uh, go to pepperbreeding.com. I encourage you to check out Tropical Tiger F1. That's one of my new varieties that I'm hawking out here on the internet. It's a 100, 120 day Bacadam variety. It's got a beautiful uh, red stripe on the fruit and makes excellent hot sauce, really vibrant orange hot sauce. You can find it on pepperbreeding.com or you can find it on Etsy just by searching Tropical Tiger.